Lisa! What do you want? Haven't you started dinner yet? No, I've been busy. I've been on the phone talking to New York to get the estimates for the wedding. New York? Yes, I got three estimates. Which one do you want? The most expensive one? No, the cheapest. Seventeen thousand dollars. Seventeen thousand. How much is the most expensive one? Uh, Ninety-eight thousand. That's with the rockets dancing the wedding march. We don't need the rockets. You don't have any claws. Oh, Lisa, I'm not spending anything like well, that. Well, if you just come outside and let me show you what I have in mind. I thought we have the wedding out here on account of all the guests. Well, how many people are you expecting? But Ralph gave me the list of her side. 485 people. 485? Twelve of them are relatives, and the rest of them are members of the County Carpenters Union. Oh, great. Uh, how many people does Mr. Kimball get to invite? Six, including him. <laughs> now, what I had in mind is, we, we have the altar there and the aisle down here. May I make a suggestion? Mr. Haney, I didn't hear your truck. Oh, well, that's easy explained. You see, the motor is tuned to such a high pitch, it can only be heard by dogs. <laughs> oh, now, shall we talk about the wedding? Yes, I'd like to hear it. Lisa, don't get involved with him. Mr. Douglas, how many weddings have you supervised? None. Then I'll thank you to keep your inexperience out of this. <laughs> now, the Haney Super Wedding Service Service comes in a package. We furnish everything except the bride and the bridegroom. Of course, we do supply a standby groom in case the real one don't show up. <laughs> That way you're not stuck with a lot of soggy hors d'oeuvres. Oh, we don't intend to have... Now for the flower arrangements. I suggest that the altar be covered with a bower of nasty sturtiums. Nasty sturtium? Or, if you prefer, chrysothanthiums. Chrysothanthiums? I can see that he don't know much about monotony. No, he doesn't. Leading to the altar, I suggest a 75-foot red plush carpet. And the ceremony starts promptly at 3. Why does it have to start at 3? Uh, so as I can get the carpet back to the middle aisle of the Bijou Theater for their evening performance. <laughs> now, on one side of the altar will be an organist, and on the other side, the tabernacle choir. What tabernacle choir? Well, you can have a choice, either the Salt Lake City or the Stankwell Falls. Now, I would recommend the Stankwell Falls Choir. They have a better bass section. That's what I heard. Oh, now, where did you hear it? Now we come to the actual nuptiation part of the ceremony. Well, I was afraid you were going to forget that. Now, to perform the wedding ceremony, you have a choice of a ship's captain, a judge who was turned down for the Supreme Court, or a Dalai Lama. Of course, a wedding will have to be moved to Tibet if you want him. Rob says she wants Mr. Draka. A non-union justice of the peace? Well, she's known him all her life. It's all right with me. Of course, you realize if you furnish your own justice of the peace, there'll be a corkage charge. What does that mean? What about the reception after the ceremony? Oh, well, I would suggest a buffet table laden with foods from all over the world. Melons from the island of Cassaba, and smoked salmon from the delta of the Nile, artichoke hearts from Abyssinia, and chicken livers. Where does that come from? Uh, usually from chickens. <laughs> I ought to... What about dancing? The wedding guest will dance to the music of the ever-popular John Philip Sousa. That's your favorite. He can't... Mr. Haney, what would this cost? A lot less than you think. I was thinking of a hundred dollars. Well, if you're willing to give up the melons from the island of Cassaba, we got a deal. <laughs>